Welcome to Nation Beat. I am Janelle Norville bringing you this brief on the pulse of our nation and highlights around the heart of St. Lucia. Government's national development plans are expected to be rolled out with much more ease due to support from the World Bank. Persons in St. Lucia living with HIV are recording longer lifespans. A new vision is articulated for the investment landscape and the spirit of volunteerism in St. Lucia is reignited. Government's national development plans are expected to be rolled out with much more ease due to support from the World Bank. The International Development Association, IDA, is the part of the World Bank that helps the world's poorest countries. Overseen by 173 shareholder nations, IDA aims to reduce poverty by providing loans called credits and grants for programs that boost economic growth, reduce inequalities, and improve people's living conditions. According to Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Economic Development, Philip Dalsu, St. Lucia received approximately $67 million, $20 million of which has been allocated to the Health System Strengthening Project. He highlighted the government's plans for the balance. The bulk of the funds that the government is looking at is to have what we call a development policy credit. Um, that's the, would be the lion's share. What this is, is money that the World Bank would give the government uh, that well, part of that money to, uh, on condition that the government meets certain uh, what we call prior actions. So there would be certain policies that the government would be would re be required to implement, and then this money would become available um, for the government to choose uh, as part of its budget support. So it would be now really dependent on how the government would like to choose to to, to allocate this money. It there would be no conditions apart from the the prior policy actions that the government would need to meet. And right now the government is in discussions in with the World Bank and the Department of Finance is spearheading these discussions. So once uh, there is agreement on those what we call the prior policy actions, then the money would become available and the government now can spend this money in this budget as it um, chooses. IDA lends money on concessional terms. This means that IDA credits have a zero or very low interest charge and repayments are stretched over 30 to 38 years, including a 5 to 10 year grace period. IDA also provides grants to countries at risk of debt distress. According to the Permanent Secretary, St. Lucia has been benefiting from IDA funding for years now. IDA 18 is a free year, um, essentially line of funding. Um, it was actually tripled for St. Lucia from IDA 17. Every three years we get an, a role in IDA, so the next one will be IDA 19 after three years. Um, so St. Lucia benefited tremendously. We received US, approximately US 67 million US dollars. Uh, this funding is highly concessional. IDA, this is all, all of IDA money. Um, we're talking about uh, a grace period of 10 years. That's you don't pay anything in the first 10 years and the loan is up to 40 years. And the interest rate is just over 1%. So you imagine it's some um, funding that uh, St. Lucia would like to benefit from. IDA is one of the largest sources of assistance for the world's 75 poorest countries, 39 of which are in Africa, and is the single largest source of donor funds for basic social services in these countries. Persons in St. Lucia living with HIV are recording longer lifespans in addition to a better quality of life due in large part to interventions and medication from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. The first case of HIV in St. Lucia was diagnosed in 1985. Since then, the Ministry with Responsibility for the Health of the Population instituted a surveillance system to monitor and treat the disease. To date, the current number of cases from 1985 to 2018 is just under 800. Acting National Epidemiologist Dr. Michelle Francois says this is nothing to be alarmed about. She noted that through the Health Ministry, persons with HIV are living longer, more productive lives. 
It is a relatively manageable number. Um, our incidence and prevalence rates are still below 1%. So we are doing well in terms of management. Um, we are seeing that persons survive longer. Um, we do have a few challenges which we are trying to address in terms of the social aspect because a lot of our persons living with HIV um, do come from homes where um, they have significant social problems. So in terms of, for example, simple things like medication, we have to ensure that persons receive meals before taking medication and that is one of the complaints that we have in terms of listen if I don't eat I can't take the medication so that is one of um, the issues that we are trying to address um, we understand it and um, we work with patients accordingly to address whatever issues that they do have. The Ministry of Health and Wellness recorded more than one milestone in dealing with the HIV incidences on island. According to Dr. Francois, aside from using condoms and getting tested, antiretroviral drugs are being used as a means of preventing the spread of the disease. Yes, treatment is now prevention. Um, we do offer prevention, well, treatment to persons as a means of prevention. Um, persons in serodiscordant couples, or serodiscordant couples, I should say, um, do receive treatment. So by serodiscordant, I actually mean persons who, um, where you have one partner positive and one negative. So pre to prevent the negative partner from acquiring the virus, we place them on antiretroviral therapy. Um, we currently do that for that specific group, and so the medication, as with a positive person, is also free of charge. This is not the first instance of success for St. Lucia. The island was one of the first in the Caribbean to eliminate the transmission of HIV from mother to child. Dr. Francois explains how this is done. We do not have any recorded cases of mother to child transmission from 2006, and we are very, very proud of that accomplishment. Um, we have in-house a PMTCT, Prevention Mother to Child Transmission Coordinator, who follows up every pregnant woman HIV positive. So she follows this individual up throughout pregnancy, ensuring that she comes in, that she's on medication. When she's hospitalized, she gets word of it. She walks her through and follows up the infant who is, we consider, exposed because the mother is positive. Um, we also follow up that infant in the clinic as well. So there are several tests which have to be done to ensure that that infant is not positive. Acting National Epidemiologist Dr. Michelle Francois. From the Government Information Service, I am Jacques Kingston Compton. The Banana Productivity Improvement Project is looking to continued success as it celebrates its second year of guiding production in the banana industry. Project manager Kurt Severin says among the gains are the significant increases in production, export and farms. The, the export tonnage was somewhere around the last, the last figures I think in two, 2015 was somewhere around to the UK. It was just about 7,000 7, 7, tons thereabout. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but more critically, um, the number, of the acreage was about 1,017, 1,117. Mm -hmm. The number of farmers was just about, just below 300. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, to date, we have, we have, we have doubled we have doubled that, 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 that acreage. We are now at 2,384. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. The number of farmers have now also doubled. We are now up to, I think, um, what, 578 farmers. More importantly <laughs> also, we saw, uh, we saw um, an improvement in the productivity. Mm -hmm. um, I believe we were probably nearing 15 tons to the acre. In fact, in some areas like Dedlo, mm -hmm. Crownlands, mm -hmm. Farmers there would tell you that they were probably doing maybe close to 20 tons to the acre. Wow. Because the bunches were, the smallest would be 12, 13 hands. So, so productivity was also on the increase. Great. Sadly, um, Cook came and mm -hmm. we have to start all over again. Definitely. Tropical Storm Cook dealt a severe blow to the industry. However, the unit is providing assistance to farmers through an approved government relief scheme. The impact was felt more mm -hmm. in the northern, what I call the northern, the coastal areas, and uh, when I talk about northern, if we start with Roseau, right. or if we start from the north, yeah. Babuno, Forest here, mm -hmm. and you come down to, to cul de sac, the dead low crownlands area, and then you go down to Roseau, right. and then you leave Roseau, and then you go down to the, to the Mabuya Valley, mm -hmm. and from the Mabuya Valley, if you go down to, um, to, to Prale, 
mm -hmm. Mamiku, Forest State, and then you go down to Canels. Yes. All these areas were hit severely. They were severely hit. Um, you're talking about um, averaging somewhere between 75 and 90 percent, anywhere, anywhere around that. Some, some farms would have experienced 100 percent yes, altogether. Yes. The Banana Productivity Improvement Project was established to help resuscitate the banana industry, increase productivity, renew income and earning streams, and increase exports. This is Nation Beat. When we come back, a new vision is articulated for the investment landscape. When you're out at sea, there are no service stations along the way or supermarkets for a quick stop if you need something. It is essential that everything you will need while at sea is on the boat before you leave. That's why pre-sea checks are so important. Checks should be carried out by more than one person to ensure that all essentials are on board. Everything on board? Yeah, everything there. Still on shore. Yeah, port car with that, same boy. Pre-sea checks should include food stores, extra water and fuel, navigational equipment, safety gear and communication yep. equipment. Okay, light out, sir. That's what I'm doing. Before heading out to sea, always ensure that all equipment is in working order, you are stocked up on food and also extra fuel. Call the lighthouse to inform them of your voyage plan and inform someone responsible of your departure time and estimate the time of arrival back on shore. For more information on obtaining a license to fish, contact the Department of Fisheries at 468-4143. Welcome back. The newly installed Chief Executive Officer of Invest St. Lucia, Roderick Sherry, met the press officially on Monday. Sherry assumed the post of CEO on the 2nd October 2018, following a two-year, seven-month stint as CEO of the St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association. Citing over 20 years' experience in management and marketing, having served in numerous roles, Sherry stated when this opportunity presented itself, he jumped at it. He expressed confidence that he was the right man for the job, given his knowledge, skills, and capabilities. The CEO highlighted the critical role played by Invest St. Lucia in the development of St. Lucia. He added that a greater effort should be put into strategizing. Invest St. Lucia has a pretty solid team of, of people working at the moment, and it enjoys support, good support from the board of directors. I'm not preempting too much some of your questions. What I can say is that at the moment I'm building the organization. Um, it's people, it's performance, I'm reviewing the strategy, what the external environment is, and current policy direction. I think it is, it is too soon for me to give you detailed plans, but I can say that my focus would be on strategic promotion of the country externally. I think we need to develop a, a targeted strategy for promoting local investment and regional investment. Uh, my view is also that we need to use technology as, as enablers for business processes within the country. Cherry underscored the importance of accountability and gave the assurance that Invest in Lucia will be more consistent as it relates to disseminating information to the public via the media. This, he said, is an area of priority for him coming into the organization as the flow of information to the public is vital to it understanding the role of Invest in Lucia and how we can benefit from its interventions. We need to improve the communication with the wider society. My view is that ISL does a hell of a good job. However, it is probably one of the best kept secrets in St. Lucia. Um, we obviously will not be able to deliver um, confidential information, but a lot of the work that ISL does should be made um, uh, available to our, our media partners. So it is my intention to drastically improve our communication, particularly locally, because 
I think that lack of information breeds misinformation, which can lead to mischief. Um, we will frame our narrative and you will be our partners in, in doing so. Cherry also served previously in roles with the National Insurance Property Development and Management Company and the St. Lucia National Conservation Fund. He also held a position of Senior Manager for Marketing at East Caribbean Financial Holdings, ECFH. Junior Achievement St. Lucia has been concentrating on developing the spirit of entrepreneurship in young people through school and community programs. Toward that goal, Invest St. Lucia has donated a check of 15,000 EC dollars to the organization. Today, I am sincerely grateful to Invest St. Lucia for their investment in Junior Achievement. And I want to thank them on behalf of the board uh, the Secretariat of Junior Achievement St. Lucia, but more importantly, I want to thank them for the young person sitting in school right now that is going to be empowered through this financial injection to be able to have a viable option when that person leaves school, that they're not just in operating within the norm that they uh, come out of school and look for a job, but they actually have the skills, competence, and the, the entrepreneurial spirit that allows them to be able to have another viable option when they leave school. Our primary school program starts the kids with basic financial. Today, I am sincerely grateful to Invest St. Lucia for their investment in junior achievement. And I want to thank them on behalf of the board, uh, the Secretariat of Junior Achievement St. Lucia. Meantime, the National Volunteer Program on Friday made a donation of school supplies to the youth. Consultant with the National Volunteer Program, Diane Felicier, rehashed the focus of the program, which is to create a renewed spirit of volunteerism in St. Lucia by recruiting, training, certifying volunteers while encouraging and organizing challenging volunteer opportunities for strengthened coalition with the private and civil society. Volunteer St. Lucia is a non-profit organization under the patronage of the Governor General, His Excellency Sir Neville Snack. Designed to create a renewed spirit of volunteerism in St. Lucia, this is accomplished by recruiting, training, certifying, and recognizing volunteers. At Volunteer St. Lucia, we offer the youth an opportunity to learn and grow into productive members of society. And in recognizing the youth as the leaders of tomorrow, we have adopted a culture of exposing them to real world experience by having them lead our chapters in, um, around the island. Today, we are here to make a contribution to our youth of St. Lucia towards their education. Volunteer St. Lucia would like to thank the sponsors, St. Lucia Social Development Fund and Computer World for making this presentation here today possible. We encourage the support of other donors and we also encourage them to support initiatives like these. To end, I would like to say to you students here today, where you came from does not determine where you are going and what you are going to achieve. I always say to everyone, do not forget where you come from. Always remain focused and humble. In the wake of the reported 5.9 magnitude earthquake that struck Haiti on the evening of Saturday, 6 October 2018, the government of St. Lucia has expressed condolences to the government and people of Haiti. At least 12 people have died and over 200 were injured in the earthquake and at least one aftershock that rocked the northern part of the island. In a statement on Monday, Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chasney called on St. Lucians to keep the people of Haiti in their thoughts and prayers. This is reportedly the strongest earthquake to hit Haiti since 2010, when a 7.3 magnitude quake left more than 220,000 people dead and over 300,000 were injured. That's Nation Beat. Join us next time as we feel the pulse and heart of our community. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.